One of the plant nutrients that's talked about the least is sulfur. Yet sulfur is very important, especially in grass crops like wheat and corn. I talk to growers all over the country and I say, what are you getting the best response from? Because I'm always looking for what's that next thing we can do on our farm or the one thing we can improve on. And all across the country, I'm hearing from farmers say, wow, I put a little sulfur on it. Man, did that make a difference. <laughs> well, as farmers, we used to get all the sulfur we needed for free from air pollution. Now, I'd love to go back to that and get no, all, kinds no. of, all kinds of free sulfur. But no, seriously, because we have cleaner air today, we have less sulfur in the air, and it's not falling down in the acid rain that we used to get 20, 30, 40 years ago. We've actually got to fertilize with some sulfur. And don't forget, we've got a lot higher yield goals today than we did even 10 or 15 years ago. So with sulfur, you've got a number of different ways to put it out there in your field. Well, when we think about sulfur, a lot of guys may think about ammonium sulfate. It's a dry fertilizer product that's often used in a spray grade form mixed in with your Roundup herbicide or something else. So can yeah. you use that same ammonium sulfate or is there something cheaper that could be used? Well, you don't want to use bulk. the spray grade. You want to use the fertilizer grade and that's something we do on some of our acres every year where we might put out, let's say 100 pounds. You get a little over 20 pounds of actual sulfur. Put 100 pounds of ammonium sulfate out and it also gives you a little over 20 pounds of nitrogen as well. So we use ammonium sulfate then we'll cut back on the amount of liquid 28 percent or anhydrous or urea we'll use for the rest of our nitrogen source. Well I kind of that, that's good hitting two things with one shot. I, I think of the same thing when I think of gypsum. You've got calcium sulfate. It's a yep. dry product that can be used if you need some more calcium in your field. It does great for helping that soil kind of loosen up and breaking that surface tension down. Plus you're getting all your sulfur needs with calcium sulfate. Yep, another sulfur source we use a lot on our own farm is liquid ammonium thiosulfate. We'll actually use this ATS for short as the carrier for our spring herbicide. So when we go out there and we spray our harness on or Valor or whatever herbicide we're spraying pre-emerge now, we'll use the ATS as the carrier <laughs> at seven or eight gallons per acre instead of using water. Well, now like, make sure if you do that, you're doing a jar test because not everything is compatible with the ATS. Well, I also like how you said pre-emerge because that sulfur does tend to heat those products up, which yep. is kind of nice if Get you're a better burn, burn down. down too. Right, right, right. So another thing that we've been using just lately is a product from Mosaic called Micro Essentials SZ and that's got sulfur and zinc in there. I thought it worked great. It's got a couple different forms of sulfur in there where we've got elemental sulfur in there too to maybe lower that pH down just a little bit which we needed to in some spots. Well elemental sulfur if we think about it, a lot of times people say well isn't gypsum the product you use to lower pH? No that's not the case. If you have a high soil pH what you want to do is use elemental sulfur. Now I say, wait a minute, that's kind of expensive if I'm going to broadcast that across my whole field. And I would agree with you, it's probably expensive for most of the field crops that we're raising. But if you're using elemental sulfur, say in a band right behind the row, that way you keep it concentrated right around where the seed zone is. You lower that pH for a short period of time and let your seed begin to grow, let your crop get up a little bit. And then it wears off after a month or two. And all of a sudden you didn't spend a whole lot of money but you got good early growth and now you've got a crop of Yeah, well, like with the micro essentials, not all the sulfur in there is elemental, it's just a percentage of it, but it also has nitrogen and phosphorus. So it's got the N, the P, the sulfur, and the zinc. And I guess one of the important things that we're kind of getting at too with that is it has a big impact on everything else in that plant. In other words, your nitrogen is not nearly as efficient as if you don't have enough sulfur in the plant. All right, I got a question for you, Brian. I had a farmer that I was talking to and he brought a soil test in and his sulfur levels were off the chart high. Yep, that tells me he's probably got poor drainage. If you have super high sulfur levels, either you have a bad test or you most likely have poor drainage. You might have put way too much manure out on the field or something over a few years, but a lot of times if you tile, if you improve your drainage somehow, you will lower those sulfur levels over time. Sulfur is a very leachable nutrient just like nitrogen. So you mentioned that sulfur is leachable and that is an important consideration. You can't load up on sulfur for the next 10 years with one right. big application. Most of the crops that you're going to raise may need 10, 20, 30 pounds of sulfur. You'll have to check to see what the nutrient recommendations are for each specific crop, but you will need to apply sulfur in some form every year. Well, once again, sulfur is a very important nutrient for plants. It's often forgotten about because we used to get it all for free from pollution. We don't get that anymore. Just remember every crop needs some sulfur and you may have to fertilize at least at small levels every year with sulfur. Well, sulfur isn't free. This weed may blow in for free into your field, Brian. It could be 
a joy to deal with. We'll show you how to control this weed coming up later in the show.